Good night, buddy. Um, yeah, today I'll just be expanding on what Josh went over uh, last week, which is different penalties of regularization. Um, so the goal of regularization is to um, reduce the overfitting chance when, you, um, when you're trying to minimize the loss function, and you also have to be careful not to underfit the model. Um, so an example, so say like those, those points are like housing prices. Um, if I underfit the model, I might penalize it too great and minimize, like eliminate 18 predictors out of my 20 predictors, and so you have more of a linear model, and it comes from approximating a real life problem by a simpler model. And so that's our high bias, low variance. Um, the overfit on the right would be from, say you don't, like your, your penalty isn't strong enough, you don't eliminate any of the predictors. So now you have 20 predictors, some of them are probably pretty weak. You're hitting all your points, but on any other data set, you're gonna have a lot of error. Um, and your just right is right in the middle, and that's where you optimize your variance and bias amount. And again, regularization resolves overfitting by applying a penalty. And you can select the correct penalty so you don't overfit or underfit. Um, these are the past penalties. Uh, we got ridge and lasso. Ridge it seems like a pretty strong penalty. It brings everything close to zero pretty quickly, but it never actually reaches the zero. And lasso is cool because it um, sends certain predictors to zero if they're weak before the stronger predictors based on the lambda you use. Um, elastic net was a combination of the two where if alpha is equal to one, then you're at a, um, uh, then you're at a lasso, and if alpha is equal to zero, then you're at a ridge, and you can pick alpha in, in the middle to get a little bit of both. Um, so group lasso. Uh, the motivation is in some problems, you want to shrink a group of predictors instead of individual predictors. Um, and so an example would be, so you, if you want to look at like a surface of ages instead of just a single age or a surface of weights, you might add an age, age squared, and age cubed, or a weight, weight squared, and weight cubed. And so it's the same as lasso, except the penalty now is you, you have uh, the group of betas are penalized together. So now the, the, the penalty is the Euclidean norm of your beta where it's equal to the B1 squared plus B2 squared plus B all the way up to the number in that group. So if you want to shrink them, if you want to shrink one to zero, you have to shrink that whole group to zero. So, just, so this is kind of like what lasso is. You're applying the penalty to each. Um, that's sort of the groups. So your, your second group, your L2, it's B3, so it's the coefficient of X3, coefficient of X4, and coefficient of X5. You, you shrink those all together. Does that make sense to everyone? Sort of. Now I did an example. Um, so this is predicting birth weights based on the mother's age. Now you have the first, second, and third degree polynomial mother's weight, first, second degree polynomial, the race, smoking status, number of premature labors, history of hypertension, uh, presence of uterine irritability, and the number of physician visits. And you can find the code to this on R. It's pretty easy to follow along. Um, this is what the data looks like. It's just a, it's just a matrix. It's already cleaned up. See to use. I use the GRPREG group reg um, package. And to fit the model, you give it your X matrix, which is all your predictors. You give it the Y, um, which is the prediction. There is, it's the weights associated with those predictors. And then you tell it the penalty, which in this case is group lasso. So to get this lasso fit, all you do is assign the groups equal to each predictor. So now there's, so there's 16 predictors. You just assign one group to each one. It, it, it simplifies down to the lasso. Um, and on the left, that's your cross-validation um, five-fold. Uh, it gives you the best prediction to pick your lambda. And in this case, you can see on the right, so that's the lasso model. Um, the mother, one of the mother's ages goes to zero, and then one of the mother's weights goes to zero, which like, it's, it doesn't really make sense. You would want them all to go zero at the same point. And so group lasso fixes that. Um, you can see it, it gives you a little bit more of a smooth curve, and it, it's kind of odd. It, the, one of the ages starts below, and it crosses the zero, but then it, they all merge at the same point. 
and it just gives you a more interpretable model. So like, yes? So this doesn't have a property that once it hits zero, it's locked in there? No. I, for some reason, I, yeah, you would think okay, you keep penalizing it, but I guess it breaks over and just it all converges at the same point. And this is a comparison of the two. Um, so yeah, group lasso actually didn't get rid of any of the predictors. It kept them all for this example. I guess you, I'm sure you could find different data sets where they did send a set a whole group to zero. This one just happened to not do that. So group lasso, okay. okay. Um, and then, so I also plotted the actual weights versus the predicted weights. And it was really, really, really similar in prediction between lasso and group lasso. But this data set, I mean, I think it had 180 um, different, I guess, points. So it really, it wasn't like a huge data set. I'm sure if you, maybe I added more data, I might get a little better of a fit or I might eliminate a few more predictors. Um, but yeah, the group lasso and weight lasso were very similar in this case. Um, just the group lasso is a little more interpretable. Does everyone understand how a group lasso sort of works? And -ish? Okay. Um, the next is adaptive lasso. And you would need this, so lasso has a really bad time um, picking out, like, so say you got one predictor that's a really, really good predictor. You have another predictor that's correlated to the good predictor, but it's not actually a good predictor of what you want. Or it, it might like, help the prediction, but it doesn't really make sense in the model. Um, adaptive lasso will fix that. So you have your, your loss function again, and then your penalty now um, is lambda times the sum of each weight times the beta. And so the weights are functions of the coefficient beta, um, and beta is the OLS estimate, and I'll explain this. So how it works, you start um, calculating the ordinary least squares betas. Um, from there, you find all your weights, which is one over your OLS betas, raised to some tuning parameter, which is usually one. Um, and so a really high beta gives the OLS, or from, from the ordinary least squared, it gives a really, really low weight. And then a low beta gives a really high weight. And then the lower the weight, the lower the penalty. So it can, it can make um, a really, really good predictor last a lot longer because now you're multiplying it by a lambda times like a 0.2 instead of like, if it's a really bad predictor, it would be one over like a 0.2, and then that'd give you a five, so you're multiplying it by your lambda, and then five, and you're penalizing it a lot higher. So it'll send the bad ones to zero a lot faster. It'll, send the, it'll, it'll let the good ones last a little bit longer with an even higher lambda. And on it, if I plotted it, it would look very similar to um, just lasso. They would just converge earlier or before. We did a little simulation on it to determine if it's better at finding the true model. So the true model to this simulation was uh, 3x, or 3 times x1 plus 1.5 times x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 plus 2x5 plus 0x6 plus 0x7 and 0x8. And you, you kind of want to see, does your model pick out the x1, the x2, the x5, and eliminate some of the other ones that are zero? And we use the uh, autoregressive correlation structure with rho equal to 0.8. Um, that's, the, that's the correlation of your x's. This will make more sense. Um, so the data was generated from the true model. The x's are from a multivariate normal model. The random errors were added with the mean zero and standardization of three. And we used the lasso, adaptive lasso, and ordinary least squares. And we compared the three. Uh, it, was it was repeated 500 times. And the, so the oracle is whether or not it picks the correct predictors, yes. You can see with a, a sample size of 20, I guess a lasso and adaptive lasso didn't do a great job of predicting the correct predictors. But when you increase the sample size, adaptive lasso ha had a 44% chance of picking the correct predictors compared to 13% of the lasso. Now, the mean predictive error is still higher for adaptive. I guess in this case, it's more to help understand. It's, it's like more of an interpretive model to use comparatively to a lasso where it might be using your, your zero, it might include the zero times your x8 um, to get, somehow it might give you a better uh, estimate, but it doesn't really make sense to use that. And so could you explain what the 
rhetorical column the same? Yeah. Um, it basically says, did it pick the correct predictors? I don't under, Justin created the oracle, but did it, did it pick, did it pick the correct predictors is basically what okay. the oracle is it, saying. Is that the proportional times? Yeah, the proportional times it selected the right coefficients that were non-zero to be non-zero and then zero ones to be zero. Okay. Out of the 500 data. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, well, so that was a really quick presentation. Um, <laughs> does anyone have questions or like want me to explain anything like how something works or? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a question on, uh, so if you have more predictors and observations, yeah. uh, and you're doing yeah. adaptive lasso, I wasn't sure about getting the OLS coefficient. Yeah, I'm use, not exactly sure on that. I Do you have an idea? Use, I mean, I've heard of just using lasso yeah, so that's what I, the first stage. Yeah. And then from there, find the yeah. betas. You use a lasso bit to get your weights. And then, and then yeah. yeah. And then any zeros, you just get rid of. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, did, I think I did read that. If you had like n a thousand, would it yeah. have a better predictive error? Maybe. What do so you think? Are you asking about the predictive error or the oracle property? Um, or both? Oracle property, yeah. Oracle. So, yeah, the adaptive lasso is, is, has the oracle property, which says that it will pick the true model. Um, whereas the lasso doesn't, if your predictors are highly correlated, the important predictors are highly correlated with non important predictors, okay. which is what this simulation set up. Uh, sort of discusses. Uh, go back to the correlation matrix. So here, x3 is important, or x2 is important, but x3 is not, but x2 and x3 have correlation of 0.8. Right? So the important predictor and the in unimportant one are highly correlated. This is where the lasso struggles to pick the correct model because it doesn't know which one is set to zero. Um, and so the adaptive lasso, by using those weights, as your sample size gets bigger, you'll end up picking the right model. Everyone understands like the challenges between underfitting and overfitting and all that. I mean, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, we've covered uh, lasso, ridge, elastic, group lasso, and adaptive lasso. And the next time we'll meet, we'll be covering uh, classification.